Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of the Atif Nawaz Show. The Atif Nawaz Show, live and exclusively on TV Apex. The only thing wrong with that sentence is live. It's not live, obviously, because we taped this weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks ago. But it is only on TV Apex, so you can watch it here now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am sure you've already noticed this already. I am clean shaven. Yes, that's right. I have dropped the beard that has been synonymous with this show for such a long time. I have shaved. Why did I shave? Well, in short, it's because I'm going to spend a very special evening with my wife very, very soon. And she prefers me clean shaven. So clean shaven, I will be. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I also want to take this opportunity to thank the wonderful guys at Test Match Sofa, my wonderful very own Test Match Sofa, for this beautiful t-shirt that I'm wearing here right now. Check it out. Yeah, can you see it? Can you see it? Yeah, Test Match Sofa. Testmatchsofa.com is the website where you can listen to Test Match Sofa's wonderful commentary of the cricket. They are absolutely awesome. I love it. It's better than anybody else out there. It's better than Sky, better than BBC, better than star better than anyone else who plays cricket out there or plays cricket commentary or whatever it is i love test match sofa they're absolutely wonderful make sure you tune into them for all the coverage of all the good cricket on at the moment thanks guys love the t-shirt now ladies and gentlemen i'm really excited i heard i heard i am so excited i can't even say the word heard but i heard that the playstation 4 was revealed and its release is now imminent. The PlayStation 4, I can't believe it. I still remember getting a PlayStation 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 is coming soon now. It just shows how much I've aged, it's incredible. I, just remember, I was quite old when I had the PlayStation 1 as well, actually, now that I think about it. I think I was about, maybe about 15 or 16 years old, maybe a little bit younger than that, but still, that many PlayStations have come out in my lifetime already? Am I getting that old? I'm old enough for my wife to tell me I'm too old for a PlayStation 4. But I'm trying to convince it, you know, I'm trying to convince it. I'm sure a lot of people feel my pain on that subject. But never mind, PlayStation 4 is coming soon. Entertainment goes on and on, evolving. Well, that's enough for me, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a fantastic guest coming on today, a personal friend who's going to be on today's show. So let's get straight to it. Joining me this week, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very, very special guest. Now, this guest has come all the way from Los Angeles to be on the Art of Noir show. Yes, that's right, we're going international. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the wonderful and talented Miss Amina. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome, you're very, very welcome. So th how, are you, how are you finding London so far? Lovely. But you, you spend a lot of time in London though, don't you? Yep, grew up here. You, you actually grew up in London, so yep. yeah. Because your accent, like if you, when I met you for the first time, I thought you were British just because of your accents. How does that happen, living in LA? Well, I've, I grew up here, but then I went to Los Angeles when I was older, so it followed me. The, the accent followed yeah. you. That's incredible. That's really, really cool. Well, thank you so much for taking time out to come on the show. I know you've got a lot going on. You're busy recording and you know, promoting, actually, because your, your release is uh, you know, imminent and everything. So, and you've recorded this incredible cover track of a Knit and Sony song. Is that right? Yes, it is. So tell me about that. How did that come about? Well, it was. Um, it's my favourite song. It's called The Emigrant, and uh, I wanted to do it for a really long time, but we couldn't find anybody who spoke Bengali, or who sang Bengali. Uh -huh. And then uh, Aluk Verma, who plays percussion on it, said, I have a friend who'll do it. And so we just worked on getting it, and we did it. And so it's actually the first single, and we're quite happy about it. And it's, it's, it's on the album as well. It is, just yeah. It's just come out yeah. uh, uh, digitally. That's incredible. Uh, so w tell me about the song choice. It's quite interesting, actually. It's called The Immigrant, OK? So, wh so wh why would you pick a song like that? Just curious. I know. I I don't think that all. Oh, I don't think the song, the lyrics, match the title except for the the, the part that's in Bengali. Uh huh. Because the words are not. There's nothing about the immigrant at all. So there's nothing that will help me get past Heathrow Airport customs or anything like that in the future. No, I even it. Oh, that sucks. Um, so no, no, just tell me. That's that's really awesome. So I mean, you, you mostly done. I mean, I, I followed a lot of your music before, you know, and uh, I, I've listened to your songs for a while. Obviously, when we first got in touch. So um, I, I'm quite curious because that was a, it's usually quite Western. You know, it's got a really Western um, vibe to it generally. You know, what drew you to this Eastern track? Again, it's my favourite song. Nitin Swanee is probably one of my favourite composers, producers, Have you met him? writers. Have you met him? No. You've never met him in Nitin Swanee? No. But do you think you will get a chance now, maybe? Yes. That's really cool. If not slammed at the lawsuit, at least a thank you for recording my cover like a song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't slammed know. at the lawsuit. That's why you just start ripping off my favourite <laughs> comics and we're, we're there. Um, that's, that's really, really cool. And what, what was it like uh, recording with um, a Bengali singer? 
the funny thing is, is actually we recorded the music and the vocals in Los Angeles, uh -huh. and uh, the percussion and the Bengali singer, uh, Amran Patel, sorry, uh -huh. uh, he recorded here. They both recorded here, and so via the internet they sent it over, my producer worked with them, and then I came in one day and it was done. So they sent in their bit from somewhere they else? Yeah, they well. sent the tracks from here. They recorded here in London, uh -huh. and then they sent them onward to Los Angeles via Dropbox, and my producer worked it out, and there we have it. So we you can song. make songs by dropping bits and pieces into Dropbox? Yeah, indeed, you can. And th like just the other day, uh, we were working on a, a track for this new album and uh, we had some musicians live, but then we also had musicians that were playing from Canada, from Winnipeg. Uh -huh. So the, you just record from your end and they set it up on this board and you do your vocals, they do their bit and it's That's a song. Incredible. So they put, they put down their bit in one part of the world and you put down your bit in a different part of the world and the producer's doing something. This, and music is made like this. Yeah. It's not like back in the day when the Beatles would get in the studio, play all the live instruments themselves and sing at the same time and that's how they record a track. Yeah. It's not like that anymore. Uh -uh. Nobody and does then, it. I don't think so. And, the funny, and then to make it even funnier is my producer actually um, was working in Dubai doing another record for someone else and at the same time he was, master like he was mixing my album as well. So like, it has the elements of Dubai and... London and Winnipeg and Los Angeles. It feels really international. It's a very international album. Yeah, I can imagine. And like your producer's a really big deal. He's worked with some really, really uh, like huge artists. Yeah, as well. yeah. So tell me, who else has he worked with? You mentioned before. Uh, Celine Dion, um, Matt Kearney, uh, tons of them. So of course, wait, the name escaped Celine at the Dion, moment. Celine, Celine Dion. So your producer is the person who produced for Celine Dion. He's worked on the on the EP, other albums for her. Yeah. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. that, that's incredible. So you've got a producer. <laughs> who produced for Celine Dion. That's a huge vote of confidence in your music as well, right? Yeah, well, he worked on the album. I don't exactly know if he produced the album. I'm quite sure he did. I think Walter Abernathy or Abernathy actually produced it, but uh -huh. he worked on it. So yeah, it's great. But even if he hadn't produced anybody important at all or worked on any album for uh -huh. anyone important, he's really great. I've worked with a few other producers and he gets me when I'm recording, to my moods, everything. And you've got a completely different style of working as well, because from what I hear, you don't actually enjoy the music video process very much. I hate it. What, how can you hate music videos? Yeah, I just think it's really horrible. I, I don't like doing photos. I don't like having to do a music video. In fact, the only videos I have which are on YouTube are, are videos that fans, people that have been to the shows, have actually sent in. And they're really just, Wait, I mean, they're like on camera. A musician doesn't like having their photograph <laughs> taken. I, Can I, you imagine if we you know, knew what Lady Gaga looked like, for example? Can I mean, you imagine that, ladies and gents? But people would probably still like her music. I mean, th the whole thing is it's about music. It's not necessarily about what you look like. Yeah. I guess in the marketing perspective it is. But yeah, it's like the MTV generation, right? I mean, it, it, from what I understand, in mean, the music industry, the music videos, an uh, MTV or t you know just television airplay of your song. It's, it's important. The, it's the lifeblood, right? I totally agree. Then how, I mean, this, so you kind of shun this, right? But you've still got a massive fan base. I mean, on Facebook, you've got enormous amounts of followers and stuff. So how do you do that without you know circulating your material as much as in traditional ways? Um, well, I... I'm pretty good about doing free downloads for the music if it's from a live gig. Uh -huh. And uh, I have a great group of people that just take random bizarre photos of me that I let get put up there. But I, overall, like, I, just don't, I just don't understand why I have to do a video. Although I know I have to at some point and soon, but... Right, on the subject of random bizarre photographs, I mean, here, I've got a, <laughs> I've got a, I've got a copy of your album over here, right? The EP, sorry. And, uh, you know, th this doesn't look like a fan-made photograph, ladies and gentlemen. I think you'll agree this is like a, no, no, a very fancy was. studio photograph. Uh, of yourself on your CD. So that was taken in an alley, actually. In this Los is taken in, in an alley. So was the back. Like that whole that whole photo shoot was done in downtown Los Angeles in an alley, and right next to this, where the photographer was taking pictures of me, there was like a homeless man sitting and just watching the whole thing. It was really weird. That's awesome. And did, did did you sign a copy for the homeless man? No, I didn't have it then, but oh, I said hi me. to him. Okay, but what <laughs> we're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna be very kind and give and sign a copy of this for us, so yeah. I can give it away to one of our viewers. Absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. Mm. Later on in the show, I'm gonna tell you exactly how you can win a signed copy of Amina's EP. Stay tuned, but before we go there, I want you to see a little bit of Amina's work. Here's a clip of Amina doing her thing.
better it's hard to always try to understand yet you you remind me it's not what we care but how we do it it's so much for being strong and standing tall alone to make a name for my own Ladies and that's Amina doing her thing. Wonderful. That is absolutely fantastic. And how long have you been a musician for now, Amina? I've been doing music ever since I was a little kid, but I did my first album in 2006. You did your first album? My first solo album. I had worked on projects before, but I don't. Like it was just singing. It so wasn't. you don't think about how long you've been a musician? Per no, no, not at all. It's just you, you, you grow up doing music or singing music, and it's just something that you. Live. And you've got to tell me, okay, right? This is it's probably it's kind of, probably kind of rude to ask, right? But nobody in a million years could guess your 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 breakdown. Where are you from, actually? Like, well, I was born in California. Uh -huh. uh, my father is of Middle Eastern descent, and my mom's of Italian descent. Uh, we were educated here in the UK, and then also God. and also in, in Los Angeles at private school. So, or San Bernardino in private school. So, I'm sort of like a hodgepodge. Hodgepodge. I don't know. It just sounded like a good word. A hodgepodge. <laughs> That's incredible. A hodgepodge. We're talking to the hodgepodge uh, Amina here right now. That's incredible. I bet all those, you know, all these years of ancestry and rich ancestry as well, and you break it down into to the a word hodgepodge. hodgepodge. That's incredible. It sounds like a dessert you get from a weird deli. Exactly. Dodgy croissants. So that's that's incredible. So you, you know, you obviously started music really young, and you know, it, it, you've done really really well out of it. How did your family kind of uh, deal with your? Your, your fame, your career, that kind of thing? Well, I grew up doing music because I was in a private school. So uh -huh. the, I've only gone to private schools and um, they were very different, both of them. Uh -huh. But music when you say was private, do you mean public or do you mean private? I mean, I mean public, here private in the US. In the US, so yeah, sorry, it's yeah. a bit confusing. confusing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I grew up doing music the whole time because I really wasn't a social butterfly. Uh -huh. I, so I would go and sing at different events for, for both organizations. And um, so I've always done music. So my family's always been okay with it, but the style of music, as I've gotten older, has changed from being a spiritual context uh -huh. to a non-spiritual context. So some of my family has a bit of an issue with it, uh -huh. um, but they like it. I mean, at the end of the day, they still give out my albums. You know, they ring me up and they say, "Hey, can you send me some albums so I can give them to my friends?" So and they get excited when they see a new video and stuff like that. Um, they get excited when they hear new songs. Yeah. Do they listen to them in their cars, or do they just have like a token copy of it? Um, I don't even think my mom has that in her car, but she she listens to them, and, and my mom works at. Is it a CD player? I don't think so. She's got a really old car. You've got to hook her up with a new car, man. Uh, we did, but she didn't like it. 
You've she's got, like, she's on, really old school. She didn't like it. No, no, she's really, she really old school. It was, uh, really? Yeah. It was like a Lexus, but it was used. Oh, that's nice. It's just a Lexus no, but a nice she, car. But she, she didn't like it. So now she, I don't even know what she drives now, but it's a really old car. And uh, so she, she works, she volunteers now. She's retired, but she volunteers at senior homes. Oh, that's nice. So she plays it for all the people. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> that's wow, you've got like a niche following amongst the, you know, the people. The elderly and geriatric. Yeah, people who need assisted care. That's incredible. <laughs> It's a different kind of following. You know, they, that's, that's, they that's like really the holiday cool. album. It went over really well. Yeah, so, I mean, so tell me about it. So, uh, other Christmas last year, you released a uh, Christmas EP? I did. Yeah, so wait, how did that come about? Because you don't strike me as the kind of artist who'd record a Christmas EP. I, I honestly wasn't going to. I don't know very many, don't know very, oh, screw it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll go back. I'll give you the question again. It's fine. It's fine. So, so you recorded a, a, a Christmas EP as well this, this past holiday season? I did. How did that come about? It was odd. I, I'd never sung Christmas songs and so I didn't know very many at all. So the selection process was really funny. Um, my niece and I sat down one day at my house and we literally were listening to video, watching YouTube videos, figuring out the best songs to do. And uh, I worked with a, a guy who does music for CSI and the TV show um, the dog show. Bones. No, that's another. No, that was another song of mine. Of oh, the dog show. Uh, the Wil Wilford, I think, is the name Wilfred. of the show. Wow. Okay. Anyway, so his name is Jeff Cardoni, and, and we got together, and he said, "Yeah, let's do an EP for a holiday album." I said, "All right then." So we did it. And <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's like, hey, have you got some time to record an EP? Yeah, no yeah, worries. Let's do it. You know, whatever. So, so we ended up doing it. We did like five songs, and. Um, they all did rather well. It was quite, it was quite entertaining. But I did get one really bad review on the very last song. Um, it was a SpongeBob song, if you know who SpongeBob. I didn't know that. Sponge that I didn't know that SpongeBob did Christmas. Carols. He did. A, apparently, he did a Christmas album, and I didn't know that either. SpongeBob did a Christmas yeah, album. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess he did. I don't know. But there is a Christmas oh song. What? Wait, wait, so SpongeBob is doing Christmas albums now. <laughs> Times are tough. We all do what we have to do to survive. Times are different. Times have changed. <laughs> So, so he did this holiday album, oh, I don't know if it's a holiday album, he just did a song called Don't Be a Jerk, It's Christmas. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good, isn't it? Say what you mean, SpongeBob. I, I actually recorded it. You recorded it? I did, it's the very last I song. This Christmas You're right, I'm going to get on <laughs> this. And do you know, you just mentioned you don't know many Christmas carols? Not at all. No, I actually had to learn them. But you grew up in the UK a bit, didn't you? Well, I grew up in the UK and the US, but I still, we, Christmas wasn't something that we really bought into or we really... Did Christmas loads and carols things. are everywhere. Yeah, but you just yeah, ignore you them. them. Like you, you know the melody, but yeah. you know the melody line. But they, they were songs that the, the songs that you hear during the holiday times, like Jingle Bells, uh -huh. and I can't sing a song about like Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle. jingle, bells, jingle. Bells, jingle. Yeah, or is that Jingle no, Bell Rock? Yeah, 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 and you, bells, you just jingle jingle go from one to the other. Yeah, you can't like do that. Medley. <laughs> yeah, so I, we couldn't do that. We had to actually do really serious Christmas songs, and you know there was heart the Herald Angel sings and all, I can't yeah, do those kind of, I can't did even you, take that did seriously, did much less sing one? it. Did you do this one that goes something like dun, 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 No, I don't even know I that one, know what is it? Something, 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 no. that doesn't help at all. No, obviously. no, I don't know. <laughs> no, I think we did uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Nice, no, okay, classic. Oh, and there's a song called um, Chestnuts Roasting on the Open Fire. Yeah. Uh, okay, I know that song, I did know that one, but actually it's called The Christmas Song, so I had no idea. Is that what it's called? It's actually, the proper name of it is The Christmas Song. So yeah, we did that, and I did a couple of others. I can't remember. Um, I really don't remember. Oh, actually. fantastic! <laughs> fantastic! This is incredible. So you did your first album. You've done the EP. You've got this new album out now, right now. So things are things are kind of flying. And yeah. Well, I did my first album in two thousand six. That's a full CD, ten uh -huh. songs, and then I did uh, this EP was the second one. This uh -huh. came out last year, uh -huh. uh, May or June, and uh -huh. then. Uh, I did the Christmas album, and now we have a new one coming. Okay. So the great thing about this one, though, is um, it came out around the same time. There's a TV show called The Voice. Yes, of course. Yeah. So my friend Chris Mann was on it while he worked on this with me as well. So that was kind of fun, and it helped really get more people yeah, get aware more people of, people you know, interested. oh, who's this girl? Because you're doing singing. everything you can to not get people listening. No, that's to not music. true. I'm just not doing a video. <laughs> but I, I get offers to do videos. I just, I just find it so perplexing that I have to like sit in front of a camera and. Have people take photos and then I have to lip sync and, and you'd, you'd rather people just listen to the music, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, it's not a so difficult we're task. We're gonna give you a chance, ladies and gentlemen, to listen to the music yourselves. We're gonna give away a copy of Amina's EP over here, okay? It's got the song uh, featuring Chris from The Voice as yeah. well, right? So if you wanna win a copy of this, all you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is tell us the answer to this question. The question is what was the name of Amina's album from 2006? Her first album, what was it called from 2006? 
Email your answers in to manager at tvapex.com. That's manager at tvapex.com for your chance to win a signed copy of Amina's EP. And Amina's going to sign it for me right now, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to give you a pen. Hold on, I've got a Sharpie on me somewhere. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. Fantastic. Perfect. Would you be so kind? Yeah, indeed. Fantastic. Shall I open it or just sign, sign the wrapper? Yeah, no, you just, you just sign this with the wrapper. Sign it's the wrapper, yeah, yeah, really? Absolutely. So like yeah. they're going to listen to the CD and keep the wrapper? Might just keep it forever, you know what I mean? Sell it on eBay or something, right? Well, may maybe. You should like really get it personalized. But so there <laughs> we go. It's signed. It's signed now, ladies and gentlemen. For your chance to win, remember, give us the answer to the question, what was the name of Amina's first album from 2006? Send the answer to manager at tvapex.com. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to find out what do you think? Where I will go to spend my holidays? Uh, I think maybe London. Uh, I would really like to visit the United States. Holiday? Holiday? Holiday. Kyuzitsu. 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 Spain? Italy? Uh, I would like to go to Maldives. Uh, I think that the, the moon would be a cool place to visit. Yeah, if I had enough money. My dream holidays are at the beach. <laughs> okay. Without any memory things to memorize. <laughs> Maybe uh, the Mal Maldives. Yeah. Uh, New Zealand. Dream holidays, New Zealand. Mm, I think like Africa. I like Africa. Dream holidays. Mm. Maybe New Zealand. Oh, uh, to Peru. Oh, you strange and bizarre and wonderful people. I love to hear what you have to say every week. I really do. I really, 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 really do. We are, of course, ladies and gentlemen, talking to Amina, who's been so kind to sign a CD for us, and you got a chance to win that. Remember, it's somewhere in this episode. Look around. You'll find it. Uh, this, is so, so, this is so cool. So uh, which label did this um, put this out there? None. It's an independent album. So you, you put it out there. Sort of, yeah. And you're kind of like a poster child a bit for independent musicians, right? I don't know if I'm a poster child, but I definitely have done everything independently. Just so what, why, do, why, I mean, because, I mean, you've got it, it, a lot of attention, right? You've got a lot of um, kind of momentum as well, and you've got a lot of background and credibility. There's no reason why you wouldn't get signed to a, 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 a you know, a good label. What, so what makes you think that despite that, I want to go independent? What's the, what's the motivation? You know, a lot of it comes down to what you do. Like, all the songs that are on my album are... Not all, but the majority of them are all original songs. Uh -huh. They're all songs that we do with the musicians we choose to have them with, with the people that we want to work on the project. And I think, for one, as an independent artist, I don't have to go to someone and get permission about what songs they can record, who can play on them, uh -huh. where the song rights go. They're my songs. At the end of the day, when they go online, when they're sold on iTunes or Amazon or wherever they're sold, um, it, the profit comes back to us. And, and and we use that money to uh -huh. continue making new music. So uh -huh. it's it's obviously it's fueled by people making purchases, but at the end of the day it comes down to independence. Do you ever find yourself kind of just looking up the iTunes charts yourself all the I time? I do. Like oh god, you don't get me <laughs> don't get me started at Christmas time. At Christmas time, um, as I said, Chris Mann was was on the this album, the Amina one, so people would Google his name obviously and so I was looking at my rates and my ranking on Amazon, like um, literally almost every day. So do I you know the things about search engine optimization and stuff? No. I just learned that phrase recently. Seriously? Search, 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 search sounds so engine, smart. I don't know, S E O. Search, search engine, engine optimi optimization. It basically means how, how high you come up on Google when you, you know, or what comes oh, up. Oh, I on don't Google, Google my, like, myself. You've never Googled yourself? No, that's You've never creepy. Googled yourself. No, that's no, creepy. Come on. No, I really haven't. Everybody Googles no, themselves. No, I've Googled Amina and Chris Mann just to see what comes up, but I've never Googled you just me. You've Googled yourself. I Everybody Google Googles half themselves. myself. No, I, because I think it's kind of weird, actually. It's not weird. You just want to know what people, what, what's out there about you. I've Yahooed myself. Is Yahoo still a thing? Yeah, it comes up on my web browser for some reason. It's like my it's my default search engine. I don't know how that happened. Just one day it was like Yahoo. Yahoo. I think yeah. somebody's pranking you. Yeah, I know. Well, then maybe I'm not. I don't know. I'm so Yahoo. confused. There's, another, there's Bing as well, isn't there? Bing, there's oh, Yahoo. I don't like Bing. You don't like Bing? I just don't like the sound See, of it. Bing, I don't mind as much. Bing's a bit, you know. It's I don't like it's Yahoo either. I mean, not in a bad way, but I just, I, I prefer to have Google as my search engine because it's far more colorful and fun. Google is different. I mean, the thing is, the thing about Google, it's just so big, right? They've got so much stuff covered that you imagine they'd have everything. When I feel like being quirky, you go on Bing as well, because it's slightly different. I mean, Ask Jeeves has just kind of gone out the window. I, I forgot about Ask, that, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think it's called Ask Jeeves anymore, it's called Ask. 
Is it? UK or something weird like that. But yeah, I mean, I, these engines, these engines have gone by the, by the wayside. They might as well call it Google optimization. Yeah. So search engine engine optimization. optimization. Wow. It's a thing. Brilliant. It's a really important. Thing. If I didn't do that, I, like, as a stand-up comic, I need to know what reviews are out there for me. What right. people are saying. So if I if, the, if I didn't know what was on the first ten pages, first ten results, right? Right. Anything could be there. Could be I like should Google reviews. myself right now. You totally should. Yeah. No. I mean, I I Amazon. Well, again, I was checking all the rankings, and uh -huh. every day it was going up and uh -huh. up and up. And towards the end of the holidays, it went down. But that doesn't matter. Um, but I saw a, that's how I saw the review, the bad uh -huh. review. But um, yeah, <laughs> I was like, man, I can't imagine. So, it but was, as a, but as an independent artist, that's a lot of pressure on you, though, because you've got to like, you've got to keep a tr keep track of what it is about you that's going out there. You know, your album sales, your own promotion, controlling the marketing side of yourself, right? Right. I mean, I, th I suppose that gives you a lot of um, freedom and choice, but at the same time, you're missing a perspective. Or do you not think like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm probably the worst marketing person ever for myself. But in terms of being independent, you also, because you know what's going out there, uh -huh. you might not be able to, well, you know the majority of what's going out there, you might not be able to control all of it. But at least you have a firmer understanding. Like, I know when an article comes out about me, you get an email about sure. it. Sure. You know, or you get an email from your mom saying she didn't like it, <laughs> but, but that's... But so that's fine, so your mom's Googling you? Yeah, my mom Googles me. Oh, that's alright, so as long as you've yeah. got somebody Googling yeah, you... Yeah, my mom Googles me. That's right, so this is probably what you're messing on my accent now, with your Sorry. accent. This is just, so it's great, you've got this weird Christian Bale thing going on almost, right? You've got the British and the yeah, I'm trying American to call. popping. Yeah. Wait, do you, have you ever tried consciously control your accent? Or is it just yeah, I actually do, and I, I can do the Valley Girl accent really, really well. Valley Girl? Yeah, you know, in, in California they, they say like and um and things like that quite often. Oh, like, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, I, but I think it's a really, really old accent because I do it every once in a while and people are like, don't do that. So. It, Valley Girl is kind of like clueless? Ma yeah, 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 yeah. It's a bit like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, fine. So basically, you know, attractive young American girls is what we're talking about. Yeah, but it just doesn't work for me, really. No, I don't think it works for many people. To be I try it. it <laughs> my friends are like, don't do that. Stop it. <laughs> it's All right, kind then. of like your version of our Chav accent. Yeah, yeah. It's like, we're like, yeah, what's going down, man? What's going down? You know don't what I'm do saying? that. Oh, well, you know, when, <laughs> exactly. in Rome, when in Rome. When in Rome, right? Right, absolutely. So we're learning a little bit about you, Amina, but we're not getting as much as I want from you right Which now. Which okay? is? See, what I want to know is more personal, personal stuff. Like, like what? I will tell you, and we're going to come to this. When we go to the dangerous sheep round, it's time for <laughs> 10 things we don't know about you. Brilliant. Okay, Amina, are you ready for this? Nervous. We're going to learn 12 things we don't already know about you. First, I need the sheep. May I have the sheep, please? Thank you very much. Here's my sheep. Here's the sheep. The rules are very simple. You catch the sheep and then you give me my answer. Can you do that? I hope so. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready for the sheep round. Here we go. Okay, here we go. What's your favorite thing to eat in the world? Curry. Ah, Curry. Okay, yes. good, good. Okay, good. Throw it back. Good. Yeah, throw it back, throw it back, throw it back. Okay, so what's your favorite holiday destination in the world? New Zealand. New Zealand? Oh, that's a nice one. You're not worried oh, about sorry. the waterways <laughs> all calm or anything like that? No, no, no. no. Fine. Okay, fine. So, what's your favorite movie of all time? Ever After. Ever after? No. That's a weird choice. I like it. Um, okay, do you like bread or do you like naan? Naan. Naan, yeah, naan's the way to go. Fantastic. Okay, do you prefer slippers or do you prefer chapel? Slippers, what's chapel? There we go. That, you, you answered your own question. It's wonderful. Okay, there we go. Um, what's your favorite song, not including your own? Do I have a penalty? No. Uh, Wait, I don't but know. You've got to be quick. You've got to be quick. I don't know. Okay, there's you, too many. There's too many. There's, there's too, too many. Too, too many. I, I can't do that. You can never pick. It's incredible. Okay, fine. <laughs> Do you prefer Western attire or do you prefer Eastern attire? Western. Western attire. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, do you prefer bearded people or clean shaven people? Bearded. Bearded people. The week I lose my beard as well. Okay, so um, who's your favorite person in the whole wide world? My sister. Your sister? Yeah. Oh, there you go. There's a shout out for your sister. That's nice. Okay. Who's your role model in life? My grandmother. Your grandmother. Oh, that's a nice role model to have as well. Okay, so what's your favorite cricket team? Wow. <laughs> and, uh, appropriate, you dropped the I don't know. Sheep. Okay, you don't have a cricket team and, you, and that was so hard that you actually dropped the sheep. That's incredible. Okay, here we go. Do you prefer being in London or do you prefer being in LA? London. London more than LA. Fantastic. I mean, you have passed the dangerous sheep round. We have learned 12 things we didn't already know about you. Perfect. Back we go.
And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, from the Dangerous Sheep Brand. Did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy the Dangerous Sheep Brand? Frightfully, but yes. <laughs> well, we got to know more about you. Thank you so much for coming on the show, by the way, Amina. Thank you for having me. No, it was absolutely it's absolutely really my pleasure. Fun. It's really cool. It's a, you know, I've had some wonderful musicians on the show, but I think you're the first American musician to come on the show. Perfect. And probably the first person from LA to be on the show as well. So you brought a kind of different kind of gla glamour, glamour. to the show. Glamour. Good yeah. heavens. Don't yeah. hear that often. <laughs> you totally have. I understand you brought me a gift. I did. I did. That's so cool. I, I love gifts, you know? I mean, guests bring me gifts every now and again. But, but I have to tell you, the biggest reason why I came on your show is because I wanted one of your t-shirts. Oh my god, I feel so bad now. But don't worry, I'm going to send you one. You Perfect. Want, you want an Artif Nawaz show t-shirt, basically. Yeah, will you sign it as well with the Sharpie? I, uh, if I sign it, you can't really wear it. It looks weird. Does it? Yeah, doesn't it? I'll frame it. Okay. Yeah. Wow, somebody's going to frame room. one of my t-shirts. In my music room, I'll have it framed. Somebody's going to frame one of my t-shirts. This is a musician from LA. See, this is how I've made it, my friends. Anyway, oh, let me see what you... Oh, this is so cool. I'll check this out. Look, this is a gift she's given me. I have to check with my wife if it's okay for me to wear it. I'm sure it's fine, but uh, I have to double check. She won't check. mind. She won't mind. She won't mind. Maybe I'll wear it on the next episode of the show. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there right. you go. Thank you so much, Amina. I really no appreciate that. That's really sweet. It's a bit I wrinkled. No, no, it's perfect. We'll give it a nine. We've got nine. I've got my producer. He'll line it for me. So it's all good. Uh, thank you so much, Amina. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, the album is uh, is out now. Where can people uh, buy it from? Where can they listen to it from? There's a ton of places they can Google, but no, uh, <laughs> most importantly, it's actually on Amazon, it's on iTunes, oh. it's on my website. If you go to amina.com, there's a bunch of places you can get it. And if you're cost conscious, there's a website called bandcamp.com backslash amina, and there's a minimum you have to pay, which is like 15 cents. Anything over that, it's up to you. Uh -huh. So it's a really good deal. That's so. an incredible deal. The Isn't album is called? Uh, immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, that's good. I'll keep that. I'll maybe untitle that on my iPod when I'm traveling later uh, this year. But that's really cool. So that's fantastic. The album is out, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you go and get your copy on uh, Amazon, iTunes. on iTunes, all over the place, all over the web, wherever you can find music. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful music. Thank you so much, Mina, for coming on the show. Thank I really appreciate that. Me. It was an absolute pleasure to have you. Likewise. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to this week's show. Please, please tune in next week again when I've got a wonderful guest for you once more because I'm just full of wonderful guests. I know wonderful people. They like to come on my show because they think I'm wonderful. It's all wonderful. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. For this week, it's your friend, your Hamsa Faratif Nawaz, saying, Allah Hafiz. <laughs>